had a really good conversation with uh, one of our clients uh, yesterday, and he was asking, he said, Nathaniel, what do you think the best backup format is? Well, that's a loaded question <laughs> uh, because there's kind of, you know, commonly about three different ways to do it. There's LTO, there's cloud, there's disk to disk, and there's upsides and downsides to all of them, right? So we'll, we'll talk just here for a second just about backup. I'm not going to talk about archive because uh, that's a whole different beast. Um, but when we're talking about backup and what's the best format, uh, let's take a look at some of the options and talk about some of the upsides and downsides. So I'll start with um, our, our favorite hero villain LTO. So I've got an LTO 5 tape here uh, that I uh, did some uh, an, an archive in this case too about five years ago. But I have lots of clients that back up to LTO. Um, so what are the upsides and downsides? Well the upsides are it's very low cost, uh, price per terabyte super low cost. Uh, it does not take up any electricity. Once you do that backup, you can stick those LTO tapes on the shelf. You can keep them in a 24 bay library, very low power consumption. And then with most LTO softwares, you can just kind of add the additional information after that. Now that's great. So uh, it's, it's a low cost if you already own the LTO hardware, which can be pretty expensive getting into but the cost per terabyte is very low once you're in there. Um, it's easy to do kind of these incremental backups of new data, which is nice. Uh, some of the downsides of LTO. Uh, so LTO is actually, um, it's, it's pretty slow to pull everything off, right? Uh, and this is gonna be the downside of, of some others too, but it's pretty slow. So let's say you've got, um, you know, 40 terabytes that you need to pull off, like, like your whole system went down, you need to pull everything off. 40 terabytes off of LTOs, you know, that could take, you know, that could take a couple days realistically because you've got to get a, a system up and running. You've got to get your LTO connected to some, some, something else. Depends on the scenario. But LTO is not particularly fast. Uh, now, I also touched on something else that kind of sucks about LTO. Uh, if your LTO hardware has any issues, let's say the server that your LTO is connected to or the tape library or the LTO drive itself, if that has any issues, you're hosed as far as like, as far as speed. Because <laughs> LTO, there's different formats. It's gotten a lot better over the years. LTFS is common. Uh, that's kind of a universal format that most vendors have adopted. But even if you have LTFS, which is a universal format, meaning no matter what system you made this LTO on, you can go to another LTO system and restore it. No matter what, you've got to find another LTO. And this is not common technology. It's not, it's common in the scope of the world, but it's not common within like, like you can go to the business next door and say like, hey, can we use your LTO? It ain't gonna happen, right? So, uh, and I've seen this scenario happen where people's drives actually failed and then it was days before they could even access another drive. I actually had a customer one time where I, I was do, we literally were doing calls to other local customers that we knew had LTO to connect them with somebody. And it worked out okay and everything. But, it, it, you know, it's not exactly like you can just go down to Fry's and pick up a, another LTO or Best Buy or anything. So there's some real downsides there. The upsides are it's, you know, very low cost per terabyte. Uh, it is, once you're up and running when it's work, it's, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, and it's very solid. I mean, you can do backups, you know, LTO tapes, low power consumption. You can sit them on your shelf and let them sit there for years. No big deal. Uh, that all also adds up to LTO is really good for data continuity, meaning you can, because it's so low cost, you can back up stuff today. And then six months from now, and you can have double, triple backups. And with the cost of it, it's kind of okay. That can be bad though, right? Because then suddenly you might have three versions of this project. So there's some upsides and downsides. Um, me personally, I prefer LTO for archive. I don't like LTO for backup. Uh, that brings us to our second option. Cloud. <laughs> this is all washed out, right? Uh, check out this shelf I, I found. I found this, uh, my wife and I were at like Michael's or some craft store. And I found that shelf and I had, had to get it. Uh, so cloud backup. 
Uh, cloud backup, I like a lot. Uh, there's some great upsides, uh, you know, kind of this, you know, unlimited storage space. That's cool. Um, I love, I love, I love that it is off-site. I think that's huge because then you kind of uh, achieve backup and data continuity. I'm sorry, not data continuity. You achieve backup and disaster recovery at the same time. So if something actually does happen to your facility, you can you can get to those files. That's that's fine. Literally, you can have a have a fire. I don't know why that's always the go to like example. I've never known anybody that like their building burns down, but you can have a fire at your at your office, right? And go home and start restoring those files. That's awesome. Uh, now the big there's there's two big things with cloud. You are always paying on a monthly basis for the storage space you're using, which I think is okay with backup because usually backup it's like okay, here's the 50 terabytes that we're working on, here's the 100 terabytes we're working on, and that's what we need backed up. Again, archive is separate, but we need this 50 or 100 terabytes constantly backed up. And you can say, okay, this is going to cost X amount per month, and it's always going to be taken care of. It's always off-site. I like that. I think that's clean. I think that works really well. The one big downside is you got to get the data up, you got to get the data back, right? That requires an internet connection. Now, some cloud providers, I'm a big fan of Backblaze. Um, Amazon also does this. Some cloud providers have kind of these hybrid services where they'll, you know, ship you. You can kind of rent a NAS uh, or they'll, uh, uh, and you can load up that 100 terabytes all locally and then send that NAS back to them and they'll load it up on their, their cloud storage. Great option. Um, and uh, in fact, like I said, I, I'm a big fan of Backblaze. They'll actually, you can, you can have them ship you a drive, like for like, I think it's like 200 bucks for an eight terabyte drive. They'll fill it up with data, they'll ship it to you, you can get it next day or something like that. That's a really cool option, because that's honestly gonna be a lot faster than trying to just download that eight terabytes, right? So, but no matter how you slice it with cloud, you've got that delay because you're limited to your internet connection, which is always slower than what your, the, the salespeople guaranteed you when you signed up for it. But there are some real limitations there. So the things I don't like, you're paying monthly always um, and, and that time to get that data up, the time to get the data down can be a long time. So those are some of the downsides of cloud, but the really beautiful thing with cloud, especially from a backup perspective, you're getting that off-site, so you're taking care of, uh, of disaster recovery too, which is very cool, big, big ups for that. Uh, the last method that's common is just simple disk to disk. Uh, this is awesome for speed, this is awesome for simplicity. Uh, a lot of my customers do this, a lot of them will take our servers and then connect a similar size, size storage device. You know, terabytes are cheap. Like, as nuts as this sounds, it is, if you have 100 terabytes of data, you're doing so much that adding another 100 terabytes of data to replicate that, to back that up, is, is not a big deal. You can put together a 100 terabyte server these days for probably five, six grand. Um, to protect that much data, that is worth it. Um, so the cool thing with any sort of disk to disk is it's just simply the fastest. You can you can you can copy over you know Thunderbolt three USB three point whatever USB C. Uh, you can co copy over ten gig. There's lots of different me methods to connect, but it's local disks. It's the fastest option, and it will always be the fastest option uh, when it, if you ever have to go back to that backup. Because it's kind of like, we'll just move from that storage to this storage. Um, I've got customers that do this, that I've seen do this pretty, you know, pretty like bootstrapped. Like they'll get a couple eight terabyte drives from Amazon for a couple hundred bucks, plug them into their server, and then just the projects they're working on back up to that. And it's like, well, we back up the three active projects to three different drives. And if something went wrong, They'd unplug a USB drive, plug it into their laptop, and keep going. So there's a lot of like, like disk to disk is really great for kind of that, that bootstrapped budget. Uh, it's great for speed because again, you unplug that drive, you're not downloading anything from the cloud or contacting anybody about sending you a drive. You're not hoping that, you know, LTO tapes are, are you know, let's say your LTO tape drive failed. 
there's a lot of great options there. Uh, but, uh, you know, disk to disk, uh, it doesn't really, it can get complicated with like system setup, especially if you're going over network devices. Uh, it, can, it can be expensive on the front end. Because um, again, uh, it's not crazy expensive, but uh, cloud as a comparison is always cheaper on the front end to get into large amounts of storage because cloud vendors are counting on your spending over a long period of time. Um, so, uh, th but, you know, speed, getting back to those files quickly, there's really nothing quite like disk to disk. Anyways. I hope this was helpful. These are three, kind of the three major types of backup formats, some of the upsides and downsides to any of them. Again, check out some of our stuff. We've got other blogs on like backup versus archive. What's the difference? This is all backup. Backup is your insurance plan for your data. And whether or not you like it, you are in charge of that insurance plan. There's not like a, <laughs> nobody from uh, Northwest Mutual showing up and like, okay, we're going to back up your data now. Uh, so uh, you got to take care of this stuff, but there's some options for you. I hope this was helpful.